Hi, my name is John Liu, and I go by the username of DryDot on uh, the eTech Owners Forum. I also am the publisher and editor-in-chief of a couple of websites. One's called OceanSkiffJournal.com, and the other one is called BeyondTheBreakwater.com. Uh, in this video, I'm going to uh, try and rope start an eTech 90. Uh, this video is a result of a post on the eTech Owners Forum where uh, somebody asked to see it done in video, uh, and I chimed in that I'd like to see it too, because I, I have to admit, I tried a couple times in the past and I couldn't get it to go. Uh, looking back on what I did earlier though, I think I know what I did wrong, so I'm going to try and not make the same mistakes I did last time, and uh, hopefully the engine will start right up. Okay, so let's start by taking off the, the hood of the engine. We'll just basically flip down the two little levers on either side and take off the hood. I think every uh, Evernet eTech owner realizes how tight this is. You can see it's pretty, pretty compact. Uh, fits just barely within the cowling. The uh, oil tank, the uh, EMM, and then we've got the flywheel housing that we're going to have to remove in order to do the the uh, rope start of the engine. One of the first steps that you have to take before you remove the flywheel cover is to unhook the engine fuse. It's this little guy right here. It's on the side of the housing. So you have to make sure you unclip it and pull it off. Okay, the first time I did this, I forgot, or actually I didn't realize I had to do that. I think it's probably in the manual. The RP is pretty good about that kind of stuff. Uh, but it was four in the morning and I couldn't read the manual, so I uh, popped the housing off without taking this out. And somewhere in the course of that, I believe what happened was I wound up popping the fuse out and it's just a mess. So. Make sure you unclip this um, fuse holder from the side of the flywheel cover. Well, I have to apologize for you, to you for all the background noise. We've got some construction going on behind our house, so it sounds like they've got some sort of saw going. Uh, anyway, uh, in order to remove the flywheel cover so that you can do the rope start, you basically uh, got to get this cover off. Now, the first time I did this, I was looking at it thinking, oh, I've got to remove these two hex bolts and uh, maybe these two screws uh, before I can get the cover off. Uh, not a good idea. Turns out these are not attached to the cover. Uh, if you'll notice, there's a couple of rubber isolator mounts in here. Uh, really, all you've got to do is is just press up and the cover comes off. Now, you got to be careful because the uh, these are really just press fits. They're little O-rings with a little ridge on them. They come out very easily. Uh, as I mentioned before, I lost the fuse when I first did it in the water at 4 in the morning. I also managed to lose these little rubber doohickeys. And it turns out, there is another one in here too. Okay, I mentioned there's two uh, isolator mounts in the front. They're just press fits. The thing that uh, burned me the first time I tried this was, it turns out there's a third isolator mount uh, in the back of the manifold cover, which is right here. Okay, you can see it. I'm pointing to it with my finger. You can see it. Uh, it's obviously not very uh, clear. You can't see it very well if you're inside the boat uh, trying to do this in the middle of the night. Uh, so when I first did this, I pulled it off. Now you got to be careful because it also has a rubber grommet uh, for vibration isolation, I'm sure. And it also comes out very easily. In fact, it's come off the, the housing already. You just can't see it. I'm going to try and pull it out now so you can see the mount. But uh, if I were trying to do this in the middle of the night or in a tough situation, I think you can see it's it's uh, it's just like the other ones. And it goes in this little hole right in here and then fits over the post. The problem is if you were to do this someplace and not realize that the little rubber grommet is there, you're going to lose it. In fact, I lost it the first time I tried it uh, on the water at 4 a.m. My uh, BRP dealer, which is Boat Depot in San Diego, was just great. They uh, actually gave me one for free instead of charging me for it. Um, but uh, you can see it's sort of a little bit of a pain. You have to be very careful that you don't accidentally lose it. Uh, the other thing, of course, is if you notice, it is a little bit um, tough. To f I mean, it's tight under the hood. And to try and put this back on while the engine's running, I think, would be, you know, you obviously wouldn't want to try that. So. I think if you were to, you know, if you, once we get the motor started with a rope pull, I think I would just press this cover on it, 
leave this little rubber grommet out of the picture until I get home. Don't want to get your fingers back there. Okay, another warning here. Um, up underneath the uh, flywheel cover is this little guy. This is a spare fuse holder. So if you haven't noticed this before, you want to make sure that you don't lose that as well when you take the flywheel cover off. Uh, it's pretty snug, but again, it can pop out and it's not something you want to lose in the water, that's for sure. So we've got the fuse holder off. I'm sorry, the, uh, the fuse holder for the engine off. And then also the spare fuse holder under here. Uh, like I said, I'm going to leave it here for right now, but if you're on the water, you might want to consider taking this off before you try to start. Okay, so now you can see the flywheel. You notice that here are the notches. There's one here, and there's one on the far side, so they're 180 degrees apart, but here's one of the notches for the starter rope. So basically, the rope with a knot on it to keep it from coming out gets wrapped around here, and then you pull on it. Okay, so that's all there's. <laughs> that's all you need to do theoretically. Okay, so now I've got my pull start cable ready. Um, it is a piece of uh, eighth-inch parachute cord, so it's strong nylon cord. I've got several overhand knots in this end to basically uh, get jammed up into the notch on the flywheel. I'm going to put some turns around uh, and then pull on it to get the engine going. I've given myself about two feet of slack. And then at the end, I've just done a simple overhand loop knot. Now, uh, the reason I'm doing that is when I get ready to pull, I'm going to use a piece of aluminum tubing. It could be a screwdriver, but I just happen to have this piece of tubing ready uh, when I pull on it. And the reason uh, I want to do that, and maybe I'm just being <laughs> overly cautious, but I don't want to actually um, wrap this around my fingers or around my wrist in order to pull because I'm worried that uh, if I pull and something happens and maybe the, the knot doesn't fly free of the flywheel uh, and the engine keeps running, you know, the flywheel is going to be spinning around. It could, if the flywheel gets jammed in it, it could wind up pulling my hand into the engine. So I want to be able to have something that I can easily let go of or will get pulled out of my hands uh, without me getting sucked into the engine too. Um, so like I said, maybe I'm being overly cautious, but uh, just in case, like I said, I'm going to leave this loop here with something that will easily come off. You know, in the event that it, there's too much tension, I can just let go of it. And uh, I think uh, I think that's all we need to do for the cable. Okay, we've got the rope finished. Uh, I think we're just about ready to go to give it a try. There's just three other things we've got to do. The first thing, and the most important one, is you need to make sure that the ignition is turned on to the engine. Uh, the first, the last couple times I tried to do that, I forgot to turn the key on. I don't know why I thought the engine would run with the ignition turned off. Um, but uh, that's what I did. So now this time, now that I thought about it, uh, I'm going to make sure the ignition is turned on. Uh, you also have to make sure you have plenty of fuel to the engine. So right, I'm going to, I've got the fuel bulb pumped up, ready to go. And then the last thing because is because, of course, since I'm doing it in the driveway, I need to make sure I have some sort of uh, source of cooling water going into the engine. So I've got my garden hose down here. I'm going to attach it and uh, get some water running through the engine. And then we're ready to give it a try. Okay, so one of the last steps is we're going to go ahead and hook the hose up to the engine. Make sure everything is going fine. Got some good water circulation down there. Okay, so uh, hopefully you heard the engine go off, the alarm go off now. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a try. Uh, Got the rope fed through. I'm going to use, uh, I have a loop in here, and I'm going to have a little bar on it so I can pull uh, more easily. I was going to make a wrist loop, but it just suddenly occurred to me that that might not be a good idea if the rope gets caught in the flywheel some reason, for some reason. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a pull now, and theoretically, things should start. So let's see what happens. Nope. Nope, that didn't work. Let's go give it another try. I'm going to feed the rope all the way around. A little bit tougher than I thought. It's going to be. Of course, I could just be getting weak in my old age, you know. Here, folks. Here we go. Here we go. It 